All righty, here we go. Got a good one for you guys today. Um, first off, news. I'm going to talk about news because everyone is telling me um, Fed crypto. Everyone's telling me that um, the only reason Bitcoin pumped is because the Feds came out with good news and they're saying, oh, you couldn't have possibly predicted the good news that, that you couldn't possibly predict what the Fed was going to say. And I'm like, really? Because uh, I made a video back here saying that Bitcoin's about to go absolutely crazy and it's about to be big money. And I made another video over here saying the bull run is going to continue. And then this big pump came in and now everyone's saying, oh, it's news, news, news. And I'm like, we've talked about this before because what is this? What does this have to do with anything? The only reason people re resort to news is because they feel bad that they missed out. They feel bad that they missed out on this pump. So they try to justify it to themselves by saying, oh, you know what? The news article came out. That's why I missed this pump. Whereas if you had been a good person that was doing technical analysts and charting, you would have seen down here, like I, I made the video that quite literally said, this is the decision point. And we ended up moving up. So at this point, we're entering long. So you can go back in the Discord and watch and go back on YouTube and watch. But I literally made the video over here saying the bull run's going to continue. I entered along, made money here. A lot of people missed out. So what do they do? They sell, oh, it, the only reason it pumped was because of news. And they try to make themselves feel better by thinking, oh, there's no way they, that you could have possibly known that this price was going to pump. Right? It all depended on what the Fed was going to say. And we had, it was a 50-50 chance. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't because back here I told you it was a decision point. And back here I said if Bitcoin starts to break up, this is going to enter uh, pretty much the run that's going to take us to all-time highs. Right? But, but people don't want to believe that because it's hard for them to admit that they're wrong. So they'd rather, they would rather be wrong and, and use the excuse for news than take responsibility and say, you know what? I could have predicted this because the people that say, you know what, I could have predicted this, I was wrong. The people that take responsibility, those are the people that are going to learn and that are going to be able to say, <clears throat> you know what, yeah, I, I missed this. It has The chart has nothing to do with news because it's all baked in, right? There's a reason we touched, there's a reason we had buyers down here six different times that whales came in and bought Bitcoin down here. Six different times. There's a reason for that because you're not, you're going to tell me that somebody with hundreds of millions of dollars doesn't already know what the Fed is going to say. They already know. That's why they're buying down here. That's why it's all baked into the charts. All right. So you got to pay attention to that stuff. You got to take responsibility. You got to say, hey, news has nothing to do with this. Everything that's in the charts, there's a there's a signal for it. There's, you can see it in the price action. It's all right there. You just have to open your eyes and you have to be open minded and not sit there and, and blame news for why you lose money or why you miss out on moves. All right. Because you're never going to learn that way and you're never going to get not going to get very far in this game at all if you try and do that. All right. So it has nothing to do with news. That's why I really don't care about news. I don't care about what, what, what comes out on the TV because it's all already in the charts. And people with big money already know what the news headlines are going to be the day before it happens or the week before it happens. I, anyways, um, next, next uh, that's my the, the little news rant topic. Next, what we're going to talk about is this pattern that I talk about a lot uh, where you come down here, you set a low, you come back to the neckline, you set a lower low, and you come back to the neckline again. This neckline is now very weak, and it will most likely break 90% of the time. Same exact thing happened back here. Um, we had the exact thing kind of right here where uh, there was a couple of these, right? There was 32 or 33,000 over here where we, we dropped from here. We came back to the neckline. We dropped all the way down here. We came back to the neckline. And um, there's a couple of more of these patterns on like the lower time frames uh, where you have another one over here where you if I, if I go down to like the two hour, you can see a little bit better lower time frame. But you can see if I just draw this kind of neckline here, you, you come down and you come up to this level a couple of times and you set a lower low and you come back to this level. And it's very clear that this level is going to break now. We even come back or retest it and then we launch higher. Right. And we have this exact pattern. The most famous uh, example of this pattern is on the weekly. And I talk about this quite a lot back here. Um, if you take a look at this neckline here, uh, you have the exact same thing. You have a drop, return to the neckline, a lower low, return to the neckline. This should have broken out, but we ended up having the COVID dump, which actually took us to another lower low and then back to the neckline again. And at this point, it's very clear that this neckline, this $10,000 is going to break. And we do the exact same thing where we break through, we retest the neckline and then we take off. Exact same thing. And what are we doing now? The exact same pattern, right? I'll draw one more time for you. You know, you drop down, come back to the neckline, drop to a lower low, come back to the neckline. And this is now very weak and we could even bounce off of it and then explode. Something like that. Or we could just break straight through it. Happens all the time. One of my favorite patterns to trade. And if you've been in the Discord for a while, you'll know we've talked about this and 
We've actually traded this pattern a few times and it's, it's pretty easy money. Um, overall, big target. Uh, also, I should mention this pattern actually works in the other direction as well. It works in both directions. So if this price had went up, came down to the neckline and then set a higher high, and came down to the neckline, it's very likely to break down. All right, so there's that. Next, we want to talk about the target. Um, we haven't taken a look at this in a while, so let me pull up the, um, what is it called, two-year multiplier. And it's now sitting at 116,000, right? It's, it's actually, I have this, I had this uh, drawn here for like the last two months at 150K. That's kind of my, my prediction, 150 to 170K for this um, blow off top. Um, so we'll see what kind of, if, if that ends up playing out. I also have a circle drawn here about 80K by the end of the month. Uh, this should be by like the end of October. Um, so yeah, there's that. That's kind of the target still long term. I expect to blow off top through to blow off through this two-year multiplier. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And uh, real quick, I want to spend the last couple minutes here talking about the altcoins. Um, and there's a couple of them, right? ETH doing absolutely phenomenal. We drew this um, tra horizontal training range. We broke out of it. And it's just been um, absolutely beautiful, right? If you just bought, you know, um, bought at the support line down here, it's already up 22%. So you can get rid of that. Uh, but this is probably going to continue on to all-time highs as well. Um, Doge also looking like it wants to break above the 22 to 23 cent range finally again. And it also looks like it's forming a much longer pattern here on the, if I pull up the EMAs, um, right? If it gets through these EMAs, it looks like, if I go to the three-day, looks like some sort of a W pattern, right? Kind of like this, and then another test of the bottom. And then that's where we really kind of start to take off and... and um, potentially go to all-time highs as well. Um, XRP also had a really good day, 10%, uh, and it looks like it's just going to continue that. Uh, again, if we come back to like $1.30 over here, that um, has the exact same pattern that we talked about before, where it would be a very weak neckline, and that could also send us back to um, recent all-time highs above, above $2 and hopefully get to 3 or $4. So keep an eye on that. Um, let's see here. Uh, VET is also a coin that I've also been kind of keeping an eye on. Uh, it looks like it's doing pretty good. I, I've never really traded this, but anything above 15 cents at this point would be very, very bullish. So I'll just go ahead and draw a line there. 15.2. And then you're probably going to all time highs at that point. Um, I mean, that also looks like, uh, we've tested that level a couple of times, right? came here, we came here, and it kind of looks like a perfect head and shoulders, right? So that, that looks really good. You can even enter now, very low leverage, and just getting back to that neckline is 30%, all-time highs is 100% move, 3x long, and that's a 4x gain. Um, Avalanche, I think this is AVEX, it looks very good. It just got added to Coinbase, so I threw it on my chart, and it, it's probably going to have a pump here because of it's just got so much more liquidity now that it's on Coinbase, and it's actually looking like it's right now breaking above these um, these levels over here with, with um, a lot of excitement with the volume. And it's been one of those coins that I, I still don't know why, but it's just gotten an absolute a insane amount of volume that's come in compared to like its normal volume back here. I'm not sure what exactly all this volume is or where it came from. Maybe it got listed on some exchange and then from there it's just been pumping. But um, I still think this, I don't know what the, what the market cap is. I can check real quick. Give me a second. So the market cap is uh, 16 billion. So this could go up, you know, even a, you know, two, three X, and depending on how high it gets on the on the leaderboard. So, I mean, it could very easily get to a couple hundred dollars there. So, <clears throat> nothing too, um, nothing. It's not like you're you're too late here, right? It's just it's back into price discovery mode pretty soon here. Um, EGLD, another coin I talked about, if it gets above this line as well, it could very easily just go completely parabolic. Um, and then XTZ, very close to entering price discovery mode. It just has to break this last line and it, it's already kind of consolidated here. And now it looks like it's might be just ready to completely blow up. And I'm already in a long on this position. People at discord know that, um, they saw my position. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, I'm just going to look for a really big daily volume for an exit point. That's pretty much it. And then comp, same thing. Comp is breaking above this, uh, resistance line quite perfectly and this could very easily just go up 50% to 100%. That's pretty much it though. ADA doing ADA things and uh, yeah, until next time, peace.